Hi, I'm Bart Paulson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010, Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're looking at Quiz 3 on Chapter 7, which is about estimation. The first question is, what is the point estimate for the population mean if the population standard deviation is 10, the sample size is 100, and the sample mean is 80? And the choices are, it cannot be calculated without additional information, or it's 70 to 90, or it's 78 to 82, or it's 80. Well, this is kind of a trick question, this one. The answer is 80, and the reason for that is it's a point estimate. It's only asking for a single number. And in fact, most of the information in this question is irrelevant. And so you see, we can just cross out the stuff about the population standard deviation and the sample size, because that just doesn't matter in getting the point estimate. All we need is the sample mean. And the sample mean is the point estimate for the population mean. Number two, for which measures is it possible to compute a confidence interval? So the uh, choices are A, only the population mean, B, any population parameter, C, only unbiased measures, D, only measures with normally distributed scores. Well, the answer in this case is any population parameter. Again, anything that you can calculate for a statistic, you can get a um, a corresponding confidence interval for the population parameter. So you can do it for the mean or for the standard deviation or the IQR or the uh, you know the third quartile divided by the ratio of the IQR to the variance or whatever. Any of those you can do a um, confidence interval around it to try to estimate what the value would be in the population. Here's an example of how it works. Um, so in this particular one, which is from the last chapter, this actually is a confidence interval of the standard deviation. Uh, or rather, it's a sampling distribution of standard deviations. And what's interesting about it is that actually is what you need in order to get to confidence intervals because it gives you the um, sampling distribution, which is you get the standard errors that you use in this uh, calculation of the confidence interval. So it can be done for anything. All right, number three, as the standard deviation for a distribution increases, then the corresponding confidence interval will A, become wider, B, become narrower, C, stay the same, or D, become more biased. The answer is wider. The standard deviation goes into the amount of wiggle room that you go, you calculate for going down and going up. And if it's bigger, that product is going to get bigger. It doesn't get narrower, it doesn't stay the same, it's not more biased. Um, the stay the same, remember, was about point estimates, so that's a different thing. And here's the formula. You can see that we have a standard error uh, there uh, on the very far right and near the middle on the left side. And again, if the standard deviation gets bigger, that number is going to be bigger, and we're going to be adding and subtracting more from the sample mean to get our confidence interval, making it bigger. Yeah, that's the idea. Here's number four. As the mean for a sample becomes greater, the width of the corresponding confidence interval will A, increase, B, decrease, C, stay the same, or D, become undefined? The answer is C, it'll stay the same. The mean does not affect the width of the confidence interval. Again, take a look at the formula on the bottom. The mean is separate from the part that calculates the width. And then you can also have this example here that we have of a whole bunch of confidence intervals with different means. That uh, The mean for each confidence interval is the red X, but you see that they all have the same width. They all go the same distance to the left and right, regardless of how low or how high they are relative to uh, the population value. And so the mean is irrelevant for the width of the confidence interval. All right, last one on quiz three is, imagine a sample with N of 49 and a mean of 183 that comes from a population with a standard deviation of 21. Based on these data, what would be the 99.9% .9 confidence interval for the population mean? And for that one, 99.9, .9, you use a z-square of 3.29 uh, for it. Okay, and then we have a bunch of uh, pairs of numbers here. The one that we're looking for is actually the first one, 173.13 to 192.87. And here's how it works. Again, write down the parameters, 99.9 .9 confidence interval, Sample mean of 183, that's the x-bar, and our sample size of 49, and the standard deviation sigma for the population of 21. Get the standard error. You take the standard deviation of 21 divided by the square root of n, which is 49. That gives you 21 over 7. So the standard error is 3 points. 
Then you plug that and the other information into the equation for the confidence interval. So the x bar, that's the sample mean, we replace that with 183. You see it in the next line. We take our z-score and that it comes from how confident we want to be, and in this case, 99.9, .9, which is really high. So we have to go up and down a fair amount. We uh, take that in our z-score, 3.29, and then we multiply that times the standard error, because remember, we're talking about units of standard error. Uh, do the multiplication, you get 183 minus 9.87, or plus 9.87, and then run that through, and you get 173.13 is the low end of the 99.9 .9 confidence interval, and 192.87 is the high end. And that's how you run through that particular example. We'll do it one more time in quiz four. I'll see you there.